Hi y'all and welcome back to the garden. So the last video or a couple videos ago, I was wanting to do a video on the first edition shrubs that I was going to be sent out, but it's been too cold to record anything outside. And so uh, today it's just above 30, but the sun's out and nice. So I'm going to take you around the garden and show you a little progress. Uh, and then I'll try and do that first edition shrub video this week when it's a little warmer outside. So we're getting some more daffodils pop up here and there. A few blooms, not a whole lot. Um, things are still progressing. It was nice and warm, and then we had a little bit of a cold snap, and it's been lows of 20s and highs of 30s for quite a lot this week, so not a whole lot that got accomplished. But uh, they did come and plant my trees yesterday. Uh, so the Southern Magnolia is planted, as well as the Red Obelisk Beach, and I'm really excited about them. They're not the biggest trees in the world, but they're the biggest ones I could find of the specific varieties I wanted. And because the shrubs and everything else, all the perennials that I am planting around them are also small, uh, it'll be all similarly sized and won't hopefully look too out of um, touch with the rest of the landscape, since the landscape is all pretty new anyway. But I also went to Natorps and picked up all of the shrubs for around those trees and just to get started planting hopefully maybe this week sometime. So let's take a look at those things I picked up. I did decide to go with the Fire Chief Arborvitae instead of the Matcha Ball. I wanted something that was going to be evergreen there. Uh, I'm really like leaning towards adding lots of evergreens in my garden and you'll see that I picked up a lot of boxwood topiary which is something that I had wanted to do and I had kind of planned in these spaces to put out front because I don't have a lot of elements out front. And when I was picking them out, the guy was like, or what are you doing building a Dr. Seuss garden? And I was like, maybe, uh, but I think it's going to look really cute. So let's look. So these are the Mr. Bowling Ball Arborvitae. So they have this really nice thready uh, branches here. And so those will be perfect, like three foot spheres. Uh, and those are going around the Red Obelisk Beach with the Let's Dance Can Do Hydrangeas. But I picked up all of these boxwood topiaries. So this one will go near the Red Obelisk Beach too, where I'm redesigning. And these will go in an area in front of the Southern Magnolia, where the concrete container is that I'll show you in a moment. So I had this idea to do like a three-tier approach. Um, smaller ball, a little bigger, and then the biggest one all at different levels and then underplant it with perennials. And I think that'll be really pretty. And groupings of three, five, seven, it's pretty much odd numbers are really something to look toward when you're designing spaces. It's just uh, looks more natural to the eye. And then we have all of the Fire Chief Arborvitae right here. And they're looking a little rough from winter, but they'll green up a little more. They do have a naturally more yellow cast to them, but some of it's a little bit brown from the rough winter we had. And so these are pretty small shrubs, but they will fit in perfectly by the time I add all of the annuals and the perennials I'm putting up there. So about the annuals, in the last video I told you I was getting 450 annuals from stock slaggers that I had purchased uh, to come May 9th, I think. And everybody was like, what are you going to do with 450 annuals? You have to realize that 450 annuals, some of those are flats of like begonias, and which are like 24 plants. Four trays of six, and so one flat is 24 plants. You get four flats of begonias, and that's 100 plants. So it is a lot of plants, but begonias don't take up a really big space either. You have to plant lots of them to create really any impact. So we have quite a bit of sun patience and begonias together is what make up probably at least 200 to 250 of those plants uh, just for some masses of color. And then the rest, I have some just things here and there. And then we have all of the Let's Dance Can Do hydrangeas where I've just kind of stuck out of the way for now. And so these are the ones that will go around the Red Obelisk Beach. And you can see here the tag. So those should be real pretty. Kind of small, uh, much smaller than I was hoping they would be, but they're already pushing new green growth. Some of them are from the base, which is a good sign. I don't know what these buds are, will produce any blooms this year. So this will be a good opportunity to test the re-blooming capabilities because some of these buds look pretty rough from the winter we had. The tulips in this raised bed that I did plant up in fall are coming along nicely. We might actually get some blooms this week on some of them. You can see how I just kind of lined the varieties up and certain varieties have 
more growth on them because they're earlier bloomers than like the center one here that's hardly even popped up at all. And then we have another spot of ones that are further along and then some smaller ones down here. But this will be exciting. This is a purple one here. I have no idea what varieties I stuck in here. Probably go back in that video and look at some of them I think I went over. But uh, I think they're going to be really beautiful. Like this one looks like a parrot or something. There's lots of frilly petals on it already. So let's go take a look at the Southern Magnolia area first. So here it is. It's roughly about five foot tall, which is a little shorter than I hoped it would be. But by the time I fill out the space with the evergreens and then I plant annuals in the center, some taller things, and then in front of it as well, I think that'll be okay. But this is Bracken's Brown Beauty. And you can see it has these really nice waxy green leaves. And on the back side, they're pretty brown, which is nice. There's one up here that does okay too called Edith Bogue. Edith grows a little bigger, but the leaves aren't that beautiful brown color that you really kind of look forward to in magnolias because these can be used in, of course, projects. They're not as big, of course, at this young age, they do get a little bigger, but you can make wreaths and stuff with these, the backs of these leaves. It's really pretty fall leaves. Not sure if it will bloom this year, have any blooms on it, since this, it is its first year in the ground. But um, if it does, that'll be a bonus. And so you can see how much space we have here. One thing I was always having an issue with like visualizing space myself. And so now that the tree's in there, I can get a better idea of how much space we're gonna have available to use. And you can see I still got quite a lot, but never quite as much as my head has when I'm designing stuff. So you know that saying, your eyes are bigger than your stomach when we're talking about food and how uh, delicious some food are is and you always just buy or get more of it than you can actually eat. Well, my eyes are bigger than the actual physical space that I have available to plant stuff. So uh, beside me here, you'll see the concrete container, which is going to get moved. So the boxwoods, topiaries, the three tier ones, or the three individual balls, will probably go in that area. And then some of this stuff is coming out, um, and then we'll have lots of perennials in the space to fill in, along with the evergreens that I showed you back there, the, uh, the Fire Chief Arbor Vitae. Now, as we move to the other side of the front, we have the Red Obelisk Beach here. See if I can get a good, better image of it right here. So you can see it's actually much taller than the other one. So I'd probably say it's about seven foot tall, at least, uh, maybe closer to eight. You can see its limbs kind of grow wiry. It's starting to push and have buds for growth for the spring. And so I can come in and put those Let's Dance Can Do Hydrangeas around it. And I'll pop an image on the screen of what I wanted this place or this bed to look like at the end. So all of these little hydrangeas around it, which are wee white, are going to be coming out and I'll probably be giving those away to someone I know because they've just not performed well for me. They tend to burn really bad. I might move some of the bigger ones, like we have some bigger ones over there. They also didn't get a ton of light right here where the spruce was. And the spruce was just obviously a water and nutrient hog. And I know the lighting's kind of difficult to see right now because it's so bright. But we'll have the Let's Dance Can Do Hydrangea circling this. And then around that we'll have the arborvitaes that I showed you, which are the Mr. Bowling Ball. So I think I got seven of those, which will kind of go around the perimeter. And then inside will be lots of space to put a lot of the annuals that I gathered as well. So there's some stuff in here, some things I planted in the fall that will come out um, and get moved around elsewhere in the landscape. I think about right here in this area is where I'm going to put that two-tier boxwood that I have. I kind of envisioned a boxwood here, topiary form, with it underplanted with some nice gold grasses. So I don't know if those will be Carex's or some Hakanakloa. But over winter, I got really inspired uh, and looked at some things on Instagram and that was something that I'm kind of really interested in. Structure compared to really flowy, grassy textures I really love. So that's one reason I added a lot of Hakanakoa last year. I don't have any on order, but I'm hoping in the next couple weeks I can um, get those shrubs planted and then I can figure out spacing and order some more perennials if I need them. Of course, I have all the annuals too. So I want to make sure that 
I am getting a lot of annuals and I have space to put them when they come in, but you know, I tend to lean towards perennial things or small shrubs to take the place of annuals. And that's still something I'm gonna be doing, but I really kind of wanted to use this opportunity this year that I had to purchase all of these annuals as a stepping off point to learning about uh, and experimenting with more annuals, both in the ground and in containers. So I can just show you guys what works well for me because I've mentioned before, I have really heavy clay soil. Uh, that is a really big detriment to annuals because they obviously want to put out lots of root growth and clay is a little bit less permeable than other soil types when you're trying to bulk up plants. So sometimes plants take a little longer in clay soil to get established. Uh, and usually that's several years. So for annuals, it doesn't tend to work too well. So we're going to test the annuals this year. We're going to see which ones work and which ones don't. And those that don't, I will not repeat. Those that tend to do really well, I'll add more of next year. And I'm going to use it kind of like as I approach my vegetable garden. We'll trial things a year. If they do well, we'll keep them and we'll trial additional things the next year to see if those work well. And over time, I'll find a beautiful mix of things that I can stick to um, every year and not mix it up as much going forward after I find just what I'm looking for. I highly recommend you mix it up every year, at least trial one or two things if you're an ornamental gardener or if you're a vegetable gardener. I'm not going to be doing as much mixing up in the vegetable garden this year because I feel really behind even though we still have, you know, 45 days to our last frost. Um, not having it ready at this point is uh, making me a little worried, but I know it'll all come together. I tend to be an anxious person and just get a little anxious about things when there's no need to get anxious because there's still plenty of time to get everything done. But in the spring, when you're, the weather may not cooperate with you, uh, getting things done can sometimes be difficult. I'm probably going to look at my, the rest of my orders that I have open for the year since things are progressing a little faster in the flower beds than I expected them to because these trees got planted earlier than I thought they would. I thought it would be early April, so I'm a couple weeks ahead of schedule and I might see if I can go ahead and get um, those things delivered a little earlier so I can get them in the ground even before our last frost, the perennial things, because that won't matter. That'll give them time to establish a little bit more, even a couple weeks before, you know, it gets really warm. And then I may start and get some mulching done. We're going to have pretty good weather over the coming week, I think, at least in the 50s, a lot of days. There's supposed to be some rain. So if I can get the shrubs planted within the next week, that'll be a really good thing going forward. And then I can start my winter cleanup. I would normally start that earlier. But the weather's been like up and down and up and down. And we did have some things pushing growth, but it slowed down substantially this week after the cold weather. So I need to come through and prune all my hydrangeas uh, and get those things going. The roses, I want, that's one thing I want to show you right quick before I let you go. I mentioned a couple videos ago, maybe it was January or February, uh, that the roses, some of them had a lot of damage from the really cold weather we had between Christmas and New Year's. You know, it got uh, to negative temperatures, negative Fahrenheit temperatures here in Ohio, and the wind was really, really bad. Uh, and so I think some of my roses suffered a lot of damage. You can see it here. This is Boscobel by David Alston, and you can see all of these branches are pretty much completely dead, except at the very bottom down here where it's pushing new growth. So I'll have to cut these completely back. You can tell how brittle they are, uh, and there's no pliability except in the bottom there. I may have lost the Impressionist rose that I had on the other side of the arbor as well. This one is still lively. It's got green on it. Um, but if I lost it, I don't know that I will replace it. May just let this one grow up. Um, we'll see, we'll see what this year has in store. But I don't also wanna crowd this part of the arbor too much because it's not gonna get as much sun right there anyway. And that might have been why that rose didn't make it. That is an own root rose, so it may come back from the ground. I have not had a great success in this area with rose bushes. I lost one a couple years ago, a David Austin one that was came as a container, not a bare root. And I think it's just this area of the house gets a ton of wind. You can see how windy it is 
uh, probably behind me with all the trees. But the wind comes this way and hits all of these plants. And when we had that really cold weather, the cold combined with the wind just decimates some things on the side of the house here. Uh, everything tends to turn a little browner. The arborvitae get a little brown. The evergreen boxwood tend to brown a little more. It's just one of the reasons I planted this green giant hedge behind me so in the coming years it can grow up a little more and provide somewhat of a wind block from this direction. I think I'm also going to come through and just weed eat down all of this liriope to get fresh growth on it. Uh, weed eater is also called a string trimmer but in the south we say weed eater but we've got some bulbs coming up here. These are hyacinths that I spaced out here and some beautiful, I think these are like mammoth daffodils. They should have really big flowers on them. You can see some of the roses here getting new growth on them as well. You might come down and just mow down this carex as well and let it come all back fresh because some of it looks pretty ratty. But otherwise, I hope the weather continues to cooperate and I can keep chugging along. I feel kind of behind because I've seen a lot of people get started on their winter cleanup much earlier than me. Um, but I just sometimes take a little longer in the spring because I am not one to want to be out here in the super cold weather like it is today. And that's one reason I just wanted to shoot a quick video. And I'm not doing any activities today. So thank you guys for following along. And remember, in a world full of hate, be a light. Take care, everyone. Bye.